The legendary banner for April has arrived right on the cusp of Golden Week in Japan. This legendary banner is up for quite a while actually, so be on the lookout for more orbs if you need them from the Golden Week celebration that is also dropping when this banner is out. As usual, this banner features a starting 8% 5 star focus rate and a 0% non focus rate, which means any 5 star character you pull will be guaranteed to be one of these 12 characters. It's nice if you just want any 5 stars, but be aware trying to get one specific unit that can be quite difficult. In this video, we'll cover all 12 of these units briefly and go over their rare skills should you pull any extras. Let's start off with our new legendary hero though. Legendary Alm is here and just as a reminder, Alm did win Tudor Legends for year 3. This legendary version is not the same as what will be Brave Alm and that version will be out later this year. Legendary Alm has brought along his bow which Alm can use once he changes classes. He's an infantry colorless bow so plain and simple, no colored shenanigans here. Since Golden Week is starting soon, the update data has already been pushed out, so thanks to the data miners, we already know Alm's stats. He has 40 HP, 37 attack, 37 speed, 26 defense, and 23 resistance. Not too shabby. With 37 base attack, Legendary Alm is the highest attack archer in the game, and 37 speed is pretty amazing to go along with that. He'll be an offensive beast for sure. His HP, defense, and res aren't anything special, but they are all pretty good with nothing being super low. With his high speed, Alm is going to be able to take a couple hits. For old skills, Alm has the still somewhat new no follow up B skill. This skill disables the enemy skills that grant follow ups and it also disables skills that prevent Alm from getting his own follow ups. This is an incredibly good skill against army units who may have skills that do both of these things. For a C skill, Alm has odd attack wave which grants himself and adjacent allies plus 6 attack every odd number turn. So the highest attack archer can buff his own attack stat and that's pretty handy. Definitely an amazing skill for Alm. For Alm's unique weapon, he has the Luna Arc. This is a 14 might bow that grants a flat plus 3 speed that will bring him up to 40 speed total and no other archer breaks 40 speed without a speed boon. For its effect, if Alm initiates, deals damage equal to 25% of foe's defense. This will ignore reductions to defense from skills like Moombo or Luna when calculating. So essentially, Luna Arc is dealing almost an entire Moombo's worth of damage on top of Alm's base damage. From the way it's worded, this is also true damage. If you want a quick example, an enemy has 40 defense and with this boy equipped, Alm will have 51 attack. Since he is colorless, this is an easy calculation with Alm being 11 normal damage. For Luna Arc, you take 25% of 40 defense, which is 10, add that on top, meaning one attack from Alm will deal 21 damage total. As a reminder, weapons that add true damage add that damage to the battle preview numbers. So if it says Alm is dealing 21 damage, that includes a Luna Arc's damage too. This is a pretty cool sounding bow, but Alm isn't done yet. Legendary Alm comes with what I assume is a unique special. Lunar Flash is a 2 cooldown special and has two things we need to calculate. First, treat the foe's defense or resistance as if reduced by 20% during combat. Again, this is a mini moon bow effect. Second, boost damage by 20% of Alm's speed. Essentially, this is a combination of a mini Moonbow plus mini Regno Astro. Again, let's do another example, same stats as last time. Alm deals 11 normal damage and Luna Arc deals 10 true damage. For Luna Flash, the first part reduces foe's defense by 20% and that's the same thing as taking 20% of 40, which is 8. Then the second part takes 20% of Alm's 40 speed, which is again 8. Combine all of this and Alm deals 37 damage when he procs Lunar Flash. Not bad at all. You can probably tell that Alm's kit is ready to tackle even the highest of defense enemies and this is generally a thing archers tend to struggle with. With his decent HP defense and resistance, Alm can also take at least one solid hit and won't be paper thin against one damage type like some archers are. Lunar Flash is pretty cool but we didn't even calculate its damage when Alm's at full power because he also introduces Darting Blow forward to the game. If unit initiates combat, grants plus 9 speed during combat. Nothing fancy like sturdy impact, but boy is 9 speed a lot, and for Alm he is already one of the fastest archers in the game. As a reminder, Alm also has no follow up, so yeah, good luck trying to stop this man from doubling you. With 49 speed on initiations and a 2 turn special, it should be noted that Alm is going to love flashing blade. If you swap no follow up with desperation, Alm would be a very scary unit to let hit your guys. So I'm definitely excited for Legendary Alm, not only does he have amazing base stats, but he brings some interesting tools to deal with defense stacking units. 37 attack and speed is bonkers, so even if Luna Arc doesn't work out like you want, Alm will still be one of the best Brave Bow or Fire Sweep Bow users. I'm excited to see how Alm handles armor units like Surtur who just love to stack defense all day. I think he's going to be a very cool archer to have. As a reminder, Legendary Alm comes with the new pair up mechanic. I know it hasn't been talked about that much, but the new Allegiance Battles game mode is coming soon too, so you might want to familiarize yourself with how it works. For Allegiance Battles, any unit can use pair up, so no, you don't need Legendary Alm or Legendary Roy to play with the new feature. 
Let me know your thoughts on Alm in the comments, and let's move on to our 12 other heroes. We have 11 other heroes joining on this banner. For red, we have the Smash Bros. Club, Legend of Roy, Marth, and Ike are all back and ready for action. For blue, we have Fjorm, Winter Ephraim, and Nilo. For green, we got Legend of Hector, Winter Fey, and Sue making a quick return. For colorless, it's going to be Legend of Alm, joined by Winter Erica and Leanne. Not a bad banner by any means. We have the entire winter banner from last year, and B students are making their appearance too. For red, Legend of Roy is back already. This is because Roy has the new pair ability, and since the Legion's battles are coming soon, I think they want to give players another chance to pick him up. Roy is a pretty fun unit with a distant counter sword, effective against dragons, bonus doubler doubles all field buffs on Roy, and he can buff himself and allies with his human virtue skill. I really enjoy using Roy, and his plus 6 attack and speed buffs is a lot of fun for many team comps. Probably one of the best all around units, super easy to use, he's a very solid pickup, especially for newer players. Next up is Legendary Marth, another infantry swordsman with a huge emphasis on dragon killing. The Hero King is possibly one of the best dragon killers in the game with his Binding Shield B skill that gives some follow ups and even prevents dragon counterattacks. Besides that, Exalted Falchion has the bonus doubler effect and of course is effective against dragons. His Fire Emblem Unique Special is a lot of fun, granting buffs to the whole team when it activates. For Inheritable skills, Marth has Attack and Speed Bond and Infantry Flash, both of which are pretty good skills too. For Legendary Ike, you can receive a free copy from the story, so there's not a huge pressure to nab him unless you want merges. He also has Warding Breath though, which is a very good defensive skill, and the increased special charge allows units to spam skills all day long. Ike is a solid unit, but again, everyone gets a free copy. Legendary Roy and Marth are definitely some great infantry swordsmen, both are quite fast and can deal with dragons too. Red is pretty crazy with 3 legendary heroes this time, but I wouldn't say it's a must pull since infantry sword units are probably the most common unit type. For blue, we start off with Fjorm. Like Legendary Ike, everyone get a free Fjorm from book 2, so there's no surprises here. She's a great defensive lance unit thanks to her distant counter lance plus ice mirror special. If you want some rarer skills, shield pulse is still not very easy to get. Tag and defense bond and drive attack are solid skills as well, but you can also find them as sacred seals. Winter Ephraim is a lance armor unit. He's really slow, but has a crazy 41 base attack. Festive Sigmund grants accelerated special trigger and grants plus 4 to all stats when Ephraim is not adjacent to any ally. To go along with this, he has attack and defense solo, which grants plus 6 attack and defense when alone. Solo skills are pretty darn good, so be sure to look out for on this one. Ephraim also has Bold Fighter and Close Guard, another couple of good skills. With Bold Fighter and his insane base attack, Ephraim is a monster initiator, and if he's alone, he gets a lot of stats too. And then a strong lance armor unit. Last up, we have Nyla from the first beast unit banner. Nyla is a blue beast and is an infantry type, which means her transformation bonus gets her plus 10 damage on special triggers. Her Wolf Queen Fang accelerates specials, and for every ally within two spaces, grants extra attack and speed up to six total. She also has Glare as a unique skill. Basically, if Nyla attacks, she applies gravity to the target and spreads it to adjacent foes. That restricts movement to one space, which is really annoying to deal with. For inheritable skills, Nyla is a very important unit. Distant counter needs no introductions, and no C disrupt is amazing for dealing with some of the more annoying units in the game currently. If you have trouble with Brave Veronica, you'll want to get your hands on that skill. Overall, blue is pretty decent, lots of fun skills, and some powerful units too. For the green group, we start off with Legendary Hector, my personal favorite of all the Hectors. Legendary Hector is a beast for PvE content. Thunder Armaments prevents enemy follow-ups if Hector is surrounded by more allies than enemies, and that's very easy to achieve since he has distant counter. By only taking one hit, he prevents a lot of damage and hence Vengeful Fighter to retaliate with his own two attacks, plus a special proc. Ostia's Pulse is also an amazing personal skill, granting minus one special cooldown on turn one for his allies if there are only two or less of the same movement type. Basically, that's the same conditions to activate tactic buffs. It's like an infantry pulse for all unit types, as long as you're on a mixed team, and this can create some very interesting team comps. He's an amazing unit by himself, and with this encounter, he is of course a valuable fodder unit too. Next up we have Winter Fey, who is an armored green dragon. She's incredibly durable, and her 41 resistance is absolutely absurd. Glittering Breath is an inheritable dragon breath, and grants extra defense and res for every nearby ally. Add defense and res bond, and Fey is a monster defensive tank. Not to mention, she has Ventral Fighter, so she is very annoying enemy phase unit. If you need green armor units, this is a really good opportunity to gain some powerful enemy phase tanks. Our last green hero is Sue, who is a green archer cavalier. She's insanely fast and has a decent attack stat to go alongside. She introduced the short bow, which is the wall Dao for bows. With Swiss Sparrow, Sue is a great initiator, and she has chill defense too to debuff the tankiest enemy. Sue is also the only unit with Hone Speed 4 currently, which grants plus 7 speed to adjacent allies. It's a really strong and simple buffing skill. Overall, Sue is a unique unit type, and she has some amazing fodder skills if you don't want to use her. 
green is pretty great if you're looking to summon and there's a lot of good skills lying around too. Last but not least is the colorless group with legendary Alm. We already covered Alm, but he does have three amazing fodder skills should you get some extras. Guardian Blow 4 is brand new, so get it while you can. No follow up is really strong on the right units, it's great on faster characters in general. As for Odd Attack Wave, it's a great buffing ability and the slight inconsistency of the wave skills is made up with that self buffing ability. As expected, Alm will be good for fodder if you need any of those skills. Our second colorless unit is Winter Erika, the last of the Winter Banner. Erika is the only armored healer in the game, and while it may seem like an odd class type, she gets some nice benefits. For one, she is absurdly tanky since she sacrifices all her speed. However, she can use Wary Fighter to bump up her survivability, and that's really important for healers. The one movement does hamper her a bit, but if you're just turtling, she does her job fine. I actually gave my Erika the Physic Assist skill, and that two range heal makes her much easier to use. Her staff, the Jar's Lantern, is pretty good, granting plus 5 defense and res to the ally with the highest attack stat. Paired with attack opening, which grants plus 6 attack to the highest attack enemy, Erika can buff your strongest unit from anywhere every turn. This makes her very useful for training up units. If you don't want Erika, she has the Dazzling Staff for Inheriting, and that's a necessity for running the Wrathful plus Dazzling Staff combo. Overall, she's a great healer to have around. Our last unit in this banner is Lian. She's a colorless beast unit and a flying one too. This means when transformed, she gains 3 movement, and that's really good because Lian is a dancer or singer. Her heron wing weapon actually heals allies within 2 spaces for 7 HP every turn, which is pretty interesting. She's not really made for fighting, although her magical resistance is very good. Flyer Formation allows her to dart around flying allies, and Home Bees grants plus 6 attack and speed to beast allies. Honestly, with Raisin fulfilling a similar role and being a 4 star unit now, I wouldn't say you absolutely need Leanne. However, Home Beast is really nice to have if you're a fan of beast units, but besides her supportive abilities, don't expect her to do too much of the fighting. That wraps up this Legendary Banner. Legendary Alm is looking real interesting and we'll just have to see how good his tank busting will be. Now, some other things to remember, the Golden Week Celebration is kicking off at the same time as this banner releases, which is later tonight slash tomorrow. I would hopefully expect some orb rewards. Also, if you are in the business for strong skills, there is a banner for heroes with Wrath. We only got 3 units with Wrath, so I assume this is the banner. This one should be out next week. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on this legendary banner in the comments. Will you be trying to get legendary Alm or does someone else pique your interest? Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.